Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Against the Odds. So last week, on our Against the Odds poll, it was Sigarda's Aid in Modern coming out the clear winner. So this week, we are heading to Modern to play a super sweet and pretty janky equipment-based deck built around Sigarda's Aid. A super quick reminder before we break down the deck, if you enjoy Against the Odds and the Cigar to Zay deck, it would be amazing of you if you could leave a comment, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. All those things are great ways that you can support the site for free. Anyway, let's get to the deck. So Cigar to Zay is a one man enchantment, lets you cast auras and equipments as though they had flash, and it allows you to equip the equipment when they enter the battlefield under your control. So whenever you cast an equipment, not only can you cast it with flash, but you can immediately stick it on a creature. So I think that Cigar to Zade, even though you could technically build an aura based deck, I think it's more powerful in general with equipment for one big reason. The big reason I think equipment is more powerful is because not only does Sigarda's Aid let you cast them with flash, but it also allows you to cheat on mana. Because equipment, you not only have to cast them, but then you have to pay that equip cost. Well, Sigarda's Aid lets you get rid of that equip cost so you can just immediately put it on a creature, which means we can use equipment with the help of Sigarda's Aid, not only as removal spells, like after blocks are declared, our opponent thinks they made a good block, we can flash in an equipment, pump up our creature, kill our opponent's creature, but we can also get triggers off of our equipment, because a lot of equipment trigger when a creature deals combat damage by attacking with creatures and flashing in an equipment on an unblocked creature to make sure we get that trigger. So we went the equipment plan, and Kind of as a backup to Sigarda's aid, we also have Pure Seal Paladin, which also loves equipment. So, Pure Seal Paladin lets us draw a card whenever an equipment enters the battlefield. Plus, as long as we have three or more artifacts, we get to equip for free. So, with Sigarda's aid and Pure Seal Paladin, we have a total of eight ways in our deck that we can equip equipment without paying any mana, which is super nice. Plus, with Pure Steel, we get to just keep cycling through our deck and drawing more cards, drawing more equipment to flash in with Cigar Aid. And then we also have just one Kemba Ka Regent. Since our deck is playing a ton of equipment and we can equip them for free with Cigar Aid in Pure Steel, if we happen to draw into our Kemba, we can potentially just load it up with equipment and go super wide with a bunch of cat tokens. So as far as equipment, one of the problems I had with the deck was figuring out how do we have enough creatures like our deck wants a lot of creatures because equipment need creatures to really do anything but our deck also wants a lot of equipment for cigar to aid and pure seal paladin well the solution to this problem is living weapon so living weapon are a whole bunch of equipments that were printed in new Phyrexia and mirrored and besieged which not only are equipments and act like normal equipments, but also come into play with a 0, zero germ token attached. So Flare Husk is one mana. When it enters the battlefield, you get that zero, 0 germ attached to it, and it gives a creature plus one, plus one. So it's a 1-1 one, one creature. It can be played with Flash with Sigarda's Aid. It triggers our Paladin. Plus, we can move it around like an equipment after the germ dies. Mortipod is an equipment. You can sack a creature to deal a damage, the equipped creature to deal a damage. Also, Living Weapon, Sickle Slicer, a 2-2 two, two for three. Also, an equipment that gives plus two, plus two. And then, of course, Batter Skull, not only gives a huge power and toughness boost, but also vigilance and lifelink, and it kind of combos with both Sigarda's Aid and Pure Steel Paladin in the very late game, because we can pay three to bounce it back to our hand, and then we can recast it with Flash with Sigarda's Aid, and draw a card if we have a Pure Steel Paladin. So the living weapon equipments give us some extra creatures that are also equipments. Then we're playing a couple of Open the Armory, because the rest of our deck is a lot of one of equipments. There's a couple of two ofs, but mostly one of so open the armory just lets us tutor and equipment out of our library into our hand uh, for a very cheap price only two mana the rest of the equipment we have one of each sword the swords are just some of the most powerful equipments ever printed give protection from colors have tons of really powerful abilities so since we have one of each we can kind of tutor up whatever one is most important 
either based on the ability or the protection colors with our open armory. Then we also have the whole Cauldra cycle. So Shield of Cauldra, Sword of Cauldra, Helm of Cauldra. Separately, these equipments are only okay, but the big payoff is if we have all of them, we can pay one mana, and we get a 4-4 legendary creature token, and we equip all of our cauldra equipments to it so what we end up it with is a 9-9 first strike trample haste indestructible basically the original ormondal more or less if we can get them all in the battlefield together then we also have this weird janky combo with pariah shield an equipment that says all damage that would be dealt to you is dealt to the equipped creature instead so if you have a creature that is really good at taking damage, for example, an indestructible creature like Darksteel Mirror, it's pretty much you can't lose the game <laughs> unless you get milled out or something like that. You can't lose to damage until the player deals with Pariah Shield and or Darksteel Mirror. And since Darksteel Mirror is indestructible, it's pretty hard to deal with, but like a Path to Exile could do it. That's why we have a Swiftfoot Boots, which gives it Hexproof, so if we can kind of just load up a Darksteel Mirror with Pariah Shield and Swiftfoot Boots, it's going to be really hard for our opponent to ever kill us because all the damage that's dealt to us goes to the dark steel mirror which is indestructible they can't really kill the dark steel mirror because it has hexproof so we just kind of lock our opponent out of dealing damage dark steel plate lets us pull off that same combo but with a pure steel paladin or a kemba or one of our other creatures uh, because it gives the creature indestructible so it kind of turns it into a dark steel mirror get the prize shield and the swift foot boots on it plus dark steel plate is fine just for keeping our pure steel paladin alive against lightning bolts and a lot of removal in the format pretty much all non path to exile removal in the format and then we have the big payoff card. The thing that I probably want to do most is attack with some creatures after our opponent declares their blocks, flash in a World Slayer on an unblocked creature, and when that creature deals combat damage, everything gets destroyed except for World Slayer. However, we have the Dark Steel Plate, we have Dark Steel Mirror, we have indestructible creatures, so ideally we would have a creature left over along with the World Slayer when everything's destroyed, and then we just win with that creature, why no one has anything, maybe even get a flawless victory. And then we have a few random other equipments. Loxon Warhammer and Basilisk Collar give us lifelink. Basilisk Collar also combos with Mortipod since it gives death touch and lifelink. If we equip up, say, the Mortipod token, with the Basilisk Collar, when we sack that token to deal a damage to a creature or player, we can ping down any one creature because the damage, the one damage it deals is going to have death touch, so that one damage is going to kill any creature. Then we have a Mask of Memory for a bit of card advantage, and remember we have opened the armory, we can draw through a deck with Pure Steel Paladin, so we have easy ways to find these, even though they're one ofs. And then Trailblazer's Boots takes advantage of the fact that almost every deck in Modern probably every single deck in Modern is playing non-basic lands. So it basically makes a creature unblockable. So if we load up a Pure Steel Paladin with a bunch of swords and so forth, we can trail Blazer's Boots, make it unblockable, make sure we're connecting. As far as the mana base, we have both Blink Moth and Ink Moth Nexus. This is another way we can take care of that. We need creatures, but we also need tons of equipments. So we can use our Blink Moth and Ink Moth as creatures to equip up, get in a sword hit, something like that, or even flash in an equipment onto them with the help of Sigarda's aid. Westville Abbey can make a 1-1, one, one. so if it gets to the late game, we have this constant stream of tokens that we can equip up, and then just a bunch of planes. In the sideboard, we have a few more equipment options, more Mortipods because they're super good in some matchups, like against Elves, for example, it just kills everything and it's so amazing. Silvac Lifestaff helps against aggro decks. Uh, whenever the equipped creature dies, we gain a life. We can even put it on the Mortipod, sack it to deal damage, gain three life. And Viridian Longbow kind of combos with Bacillus Collar. It makes a creature into a pinger, but if that creature has death touch, like it would with Bacillus Scholar, we can, it's another way we can shoot down any creature. 
And then we do have an aura, Face Fetters, which we can flash in, gains us a bit of life. The nice part about Face Fetters is it takes care of Planeswalkers, Oblivion Stones, not just creatures, but any permanent because the permanent's abilities can't be activated. And then Path to Exiles for removal. Leyline of Sanctity, I think our deck could be weak to combo-y type decks. So hopefully Leyline will buy us a little bit of time there. And then last but not least, a single Open the Vault. So I was a little worried that like Creeping Curse Erosion, uh, shatter storm, those type of removal, like mass artifact destruction would just wreck us. So if we think those things are coming in, we can bring in open the vaults and just reanimate all of our artifacts and get them all back. So that is our cigar to aid deck for modern. Uh, as far as how good this is, I'm really not sure. I think that Sigarda's Aid itself might just be a little cute for its own good. Like, I think it's cool, but I'm not sure it's actually good. Like, you probably are better off just playing more equipment over it. But we'll see. Maybe it's better than I think. And... I mean, there's a lot of hate for artifacts in Modern, which is my biggest concern. We pick up on all the affinity hate, the shatter storms, the stony silences, so it's almost like every deck is has a sideboard built to be our deck, even though they've never even heard of our deck because it's not a real deck, but we just naturally pick up on that hate, so I'm a little nervous about that as well. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say this is a rough week. I'm going to say maybe 20% of the time we win, one out every five games, just because I'm super worried about the hate, and we definitely have the possibility to draw the wrong half of our deck. We really need Pure Steel Paladin and Sigarda's Aid for our deck to really do much of anything, so we'll probably get hands that are just like all equipments and no creatures, or all creatures and no equipments. And that's the risk that we take with a deck like this. So, all things considered, I'm going to say 20% of the time, but I'm crossing my fingers and hoping to be pleasantly surprised and that Sigarda's Aid is actually super awesome and way better than I think it will be. Anyway, that's been our Sigarda's Aid deck tech. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon.